Okay, let's look at some factors that influence inner sphere electron transfer reactions. So obviously, um, if we're dealing with transition metal complexes, the first thing we would need to do an inner sphere electron transfer reaction is a bridging ligand. So a ligand that has more than one lone pair so that one of these additional lone pairs can donate to a second metal, bringing these two metal complexes into one large complex. And then we can undergo an inner sphere electron transfer from one metal to the other. That's sort of the starting level requirement. However, you notice that the purple metal complex here is drawn as only being five coordinate. It's got an open coordination site for that bridging ligand from the other metal. That actually is pretty important too. So if we've got a metal complex that needs to receive this donor ligand and it's inert, um, in other words, it either does not have an occupied EG, and it does not have an empty T2 sheet orbital. Those are factors that make complexes labile. If it has neither of those factors going on for it, it's going to be inert and it can't let go of one of its electrons or it can't accept the, the bridging ligand from the other metal. And so none of this can happen. Okay, so in addition to having a um, bridging ligand on one metal, we also need to have lability on the other metals so that the bridging ligand can be accepted. Now, another more subtle factor is a lack of crowding. So if we're going to bring these two metal complexes together, uh, we've got to have room to do so. So the more crowded this, um, these two complexes are, and it might be, we might be talking about the bridging ligand or we might be talking about other ancillary ligands, but the more crowding there is, the less likely the two metal complexes are to come together. And so the less likely this inner sphere electron transfer is, is going to happen. And, um, it might actually go through an outer sphere complex or it may just be a little bit slower through the inner sphere mechanism.